Hi, welcome to my home. My RV home, that is. I'm driving to Highway 20. Highway 20 is the angler's artery of access to some of the greatest trout fishing in the world. Well, everybody knows about the big blue ribbon streams in eastern Idaho, but we're not doing that this time. We're finding small tributaries and streams, gin clear streams, some spring creeks, on the hunt for trout. They may not be giant, but they are feisty. This small creek adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. Absolutely fantastic. Good fish. The new fly fisher is supported by Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Fish USA Fly Shop, America's Fly Shop. Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, Welcome to Yellowstone Teton Territory in Eastern Idaho. The area is well known for its world-class trout rivers such as the South Fork of the Snake River, the Henry's Fork of the Snake River, and the Teton River. But you also have close by access to systems such as the Madison, the Gallatin, and the Yellowstone. However, for those who may be looking for something a little more intimate, a little bit more off the beaten path, a little more accessible, there are public rivers, streams, and spring creeks, many which are tributaries of these legendary rivers that are available to anglers with a little sense of adventure. A great place to start is to inquire with a local fly shop, or better yet, hire a guide to show you the ropes on these incredible little gems that weave their way through eastern Idaho. We're in Yellowstone Teton territory traveling around the region in an RV, a recreational vehicle, staying at local RV parks and doing day trips to a variety of tributaries in the area. It's quite a unique way to explore and hunt down lesser known streams and creeks. We begin on a small cold water stream on the hunt for wild brown, rainbow, and brook trout. It's early October, the weather is cooperating, and there are some larger caddis in the air. I begin with a dry dropper setup. All right, so one of the things that I love to do most when fly fishing is target small, intimate streams just like this for these little jewels, these wonderful cold water wild brook trout. It's October now and uh, either they're just fixing to spawn or it's happened. They're colored up, they're voracious, they take dries very, very well and they're just wonder, oh my gosh, if you do not like this, Try something different, man. This, this is as good as it gets. This is so great. Talk about stealth. Picked it up on the pullout. Another little brook trout, nice. So what I did was I added about an 18 inch piece of 6X to this big caddis and put a number 16 zebra midge on the bottom. And that's what this guy ate. I went through a couple times and didn't get any eats on the caddis. So I put a dropper on and it helped out big time. 
Look at the spots on this little dude, just bright pink. Tell you what, Mother Nature was in a mood when she created these things. They're the best one in the pool. Get it out of there. So again, took that little number 16 zebra midge. That is not a brown trout. That is a rainbow. Very cool. Nice one too. <laughs> First pool, <laughs> it's getting better. I decide to leave this run and fish upstream. After a short walk, I come to a big bend pool that looks quite deep. A brookie. Look at the colors on these things. Like, this is insane. We've come up to this big, deep bend pool and I uh, put a small little caddis fly on. And these tiny little brookies are just coming up and whacking it. But look at that. That is just unbelievable. So we're got, we've got brook shirt stacked up here against this, uh, against this beaver dam. This little log jam. And they're not going after the ant, but they are definitely going after the midge. And they're right in that foam line. And as soon as that midge settles, the ant drops. <laughs> the smallest one of the day. <laughs> now, once I let this little dude go, I'll show you the rig that I've got. Goes. That one was born about an hour ago. From my fly line, I've got a nine foot 4X leader. Um, and to that, I've got some tippet of 6X, uh, where I've got a micro chubby tied on to 6X. And I've got 18 to 20 inches of 6X tied to a um, zebra midge, number 16 zebra midge. And the zebra midge is what's doing the damage here. What a fun morning fishing this tiny little creek for brook trout and rainbow. Still, to this day, this is one of my favorite ways to fly fish. The next day I'm up early and heading out in the RV. Heading to a spring creek in Yellowstone Teton Territory. Another great spring creek here in eastern Idaho. Uh, the water is gin clear. There's uh, vegetation in the water. Um, there's bugs starting to pop off. I'm seeing some, some caddis uh, and some really, really tiny, like 26s. I don't know whether they're blue wings or trichos or what. But um, what I'm going to do is I've got a hopper and a dropper on this morning. I'm going to walk up this left side of the bank in the sunshine and I'm going to cast to all the undercuts that I see. Um, I just heard a fish rise. Um, yeah, so we're going to work our way up the river and uh, see what we can do. There are brown trout and there are cutthroats in the Spring Creek, so it should be a fantastic morning. As with many cool mornings, it takes a bit for the fish and the fishing to warm up. 
But with all the bugs in the air and on the water, it sure doesn't take long. It took a little while, but I figured it out. Came across this awesome pool. There's a really deep hole right here. And I saw a fish move out and I was throwing some bigger BWOs and some bigger caddis at it. And I went with a really dark bodied white wing caddis fly and first cast and this rainbow came up and grabbed it. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Nice. So stand below the pool, wait for it to calm down if you spook at it anyway, and then pick your fly, see what's going on in the, in the air or on the water. Make that subtle cast or it goes that same caddis right there and boom, success. Love it. That was awesome. All right, so let's see the setup we've got going on for these Spring Creek, Idaho trout. It's a weight forward four weight floating line with a 12 foot leader. Now I've gone down to 5x on the tippet and I've got probably three feet of 5x to a high floating mayfly pattern. So the caddis flies are going off, which is great, which means that we're actually seeing heads come up. So how am I fishing this spring creek? Well, we know that we've got undercut banks to the left, and we know that there's a ton of vegetation throughout the system. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly walking up, focusing on the undercut banks as my primary targets for where fish would be laying. And then I'm using just sort of my periphery to scan for any sounds that you hear or any sights that you see of fish slurping caddis off the surface. It's a very visual game, it's a very auditory game. So if you keep your focus on the undercut banks and you use your periphery and your audio senses to scan the river looking for heads and listening for eats, you're gonna up your chances at catching these spring creek trout. Another little guy. He's got me wrapped up, there we go. Head hunting is fun. Even though these fish are not big, it doesn't matter because it's great casting practice, great reaction time. And it's always fun to see healthy creeks. Just like that. That fat little dude, another awesome, awesome fish. Spring creeks are a great source of food for trout. With generally consistent water temperatures and having tons of vegetation, they are prolific bug producers. You can often take trout with dries and definitely emergers. Today was a great opportunity to search out actively feeding trout and place precision casts to their feeding lanes. What are you? You're a cutthroat. Are you kidding me? You didn't eat like a cutthroat. Because you're not, because you're a brook trout. <laughs> nice. Look at this. A jewel of eastern Idaho. Oh, just wonderful. 
dry fly brookies. Honestly, one of my favorite fish to catch on fly. So we're noticing that a lot of these fish are, um, are actually in, in the kind of stuff that I'm standing in right now. You know, in between these weeds, there are gravel beds and um, they're sitting underneath the weed beds and they're coming up and grabbing mayflies and caddisflies as they drift by and then returning back into the water or underneath these grass beds for protection. Um, so what we're seeing is a lot of these heads are coming up in these holes, right? So what I'm doing is I'm actually casting above the hole and letting the fly drift over the hole and these fish are coming up from underneath and eating it. Super fun. Nice, okay, so we've been hunting heads all morning, which is super fun. But this is a natural spot that'll hold fish. You've got a confluence of two streams coming together and this little rainbow ate right where the two of them meet because that's where the food is. Come on, buddy. There we go. Again, ate the dry, 100% fun. Getting to Yellowstone Teton territory is relatively easy from out of state or out of country. I connected to Idaho Falls Regional Airport through Denver, Colorado. Once at Idaho Falls, I deplaned, my luggage arrived very quickly, and I was off to get the RV. Definitely an international feel to a great regional airport. I was on my way north on Highway 20 in no time flat. This afternoon, I'm heading to a larger river in Yellowstone Teton territory on the make for rainbow trout and cutthroats. Yellowstone National Park is extremely fly fisher friendly, not to mention as picturesque as it gets. With lots of access and good populations of rainbow, cutthroat, brown, and cutbow, it really is a fly fisher's dream location. One thing for sure is that you'll need a park day use permit to fish in Yellowstone. We have seen grasshoppers in the fields and around the RV over the past few days. So I'm going to start boldly with a size 6 water walker. All right. Put a big offering on it. Giant, giant water walker. And uh, this other guy came up and just crushed it. We we're walking here, we saw all kinds of grasshoppers. Sure enough, this little rainbow came up and ate it. Woo, out of my feet, into the net. Nice. Didn't even see that one. He ate it sunk. The fly went under, and this guy came up and whacked it. So I'm using a four-weight uh, finesse rod here. Uh, it's a great dry fly rod, um, a four-weight weight forward floating line, um, and a 5x leader with 5x tippet to this to this big, big water walker. I didn't expect I didn't expect it. To be honest with you. So there we go. Fly scout. And I let this guy go real quick. We get right back at it. That was super cool because I got to see that fish come up from the bottom and actually eat it. And I think the water walker might be bigger than this little trout. Oh, such fun.
There he is. Look at the purples on that fish. Oh my gosh. There's a pile of rocks here at the base of this waterfall. And I'm figuring that that's where most of these fish are gonna be staging. You know, it's deep water in here. I'm gonna try that in a little bit. But um, go to where the, you know that fish will hang out in the structure and that's rocks at the base of a waterfall for sure. Breaks it up, gives them current, currents to hang out in and uh, food to eat apparently. And that's what they're doing. They are chewing. Oh, this is great. Six casts, three fish. Just perfect. Fly pops out. There he is. Another fantastic rainbow. Time to move on. I left the RV park and headed south towards Idaho Falls. There's one more river I want to poke around in before I move locations. I got waitered up, lined up my four weight, grabbed my bear spray, and walked on in. Playing on what I've learned over the past few days fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory, I decide to combine what has been successful for me and fish a hopper dropper rig with a bullet Pertagon dropper. The beauty of the hopper dropper rig is the hopper acts both as a fly and as an indicator. It's all visual. If the fish eats the hopper, you'll definitely see it. If the fish eats the dropper, chances are it'll move the hopper in an unnatural way. Either way, set the hook. There's one. Nice. Now I've got a barbless hook on here, so you've got to be very careful because they will slide out very easily. And I also don't want to spook this pool, so I'm going to go down and get this little guy. Now I see a couple of caddis going off, so I might switch that big purple chubby off to into a uh, a high riding caddis fly, so I can put a dropper underneath. But and not bad for the first fish of the spot. Nice rainbow. Great stuff. Though fishing a hopper dropper rig may seem simple on the surface, there's one thing that you can do to maximize the fishability of this deadly technique. Cast out on a high stick. Minimize the drag on the dry. Allow the dropper to present naturally. Right on the seam right where the food flows. Okay, let's move up to the next pool. There we go. That one was interesting because it just, it just hesitated. It didn't, um, it didn't actually, it didn't actually go under the, the, um, the dry just stopped. Set the hook, best fish of the day so far. Another nice rainbow. Oh yeah, this is a fat little guy. He's been eating well, look at that. Pretty awesome. No, he's cutting the rhubarb there, he's out. So I'm able to see in this sand patch, I'm actually able to see these fish and they're all nymphing. You can watch them feeding. So I put on a big silver-headed Pertagon and I watched them eat, super cool. 
really fun sight fishing for these rainbows. Oh, just wonderful. All right, so let's get this little dude unbuttoned. Oh, the fly just popped out, perfect. That's the beautiful thing about these pertagons is that they're barbless. Thanks, buddy. As you were. All right, let me show you the fly that I got this little guy on. It's a really heavily weighted green pertagon, a jig style eye in the front with a large tungsten head, um, green with a little bit of red on the bottom and a, and a small little tail. Uh, he, dude just came up and ate it, that was fun. Super subtle eat. Yeah, another rainbow. I'm surprised we haven't caught any brown trout in here today. But you know what? We haven't seen anybody on the river. We went for a little bit of a walk and uh, we got the whole thing to ourselves, catching these little dudes. It's just perfect. Well, that's about all the time we have on this episode of The New Fly Fisher. What a great few days fishing in Yellowstone Teton territory, fishing small rivers and creeks. For more on our show, check us out on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand. From all of us at the show, thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you soon on the small creeks in eastern Idaho. The New Fly Fisher is supported by... Visit Idaho, Yellowstone Teton Territory, Orvis Fly Fishing, Fish USA Fly Shop, America's Fly Shop, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,